Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Terry Pratchett, The Wit and Wisdom of Discworld. Dane reads... We have a very short blurb here. Favourite quotations from the famous Discworld universe as filtered somewhat erratically through the mind of the distinguished scholar and scribe Terry Pratchett Esquire, compiled by Stephen Briggs. So my problem with this, it's a nice, beautiful looking book, but it basically Stephen Briggs has just gone through the Discworld and selected some of his favourite quotes from it. So... I don't know, I just, for, for one, I would say you can't really read this unless you've read all of the Discworld books because it's just going to be full of spoilers. Um, and I don't really know why it exists other than as a marketing exercise. But uh, hey-ho, I'm going to read you some of the quotes that I did enjoy. Children are our hope for the future. There is no hope for the future, said Death. What does it contain then? Me. Besides you, I mean. Death gave him a puzzled look. I'm sorry, and uh, we have some classic Granny Weatherwax here. Granny Weatherwax paused with a second scone halfway to her mouth. Something comes, she said. Can you tell by the pricking of your thumbs, said Magrat earnestly. Magrat had learned a lot about witchcraft from books. The pricking of my ears, said Granny. Nice bit of headology for you there. It was another nice day in the high desert. It was always a nice day, if by nice you meant an air temperature like an oven and sand you could roast chestnuts on. Some of these are like shorter quotes and some of these are like full page long extracts. Uh, we get a reference here, uh, I'll just read this out, this, uh, this is a reference to the Necronomicon which is like the fictional book that H.P. Lovecraft uh, created and I can't remember the name of the guy now um, who wrote it but it was like Mad Alley something or other because obviously Lovecraft was a massive racist. The Necro Telecomnicon was written by a Clatchian necromancer known to the world as Ahmed the Mad. Although he preferred to be called Ahmed the I just get these headaches. It contained forbidden knowledge. Well, not actually forbidden. No one had ever gone so far as forbidding it. Apart from anything else, in order to forbid it, you'd have to know what it was, which was forbidden. But it definitely contained the sort of information which, once you knew it, you wished you didn't. Another great little one-liner. Inside every old person is a young person wondering what happened. And uh, we get some, some cat stuff, which obviously I enjoy. This is Grebo. Between you and me, he's a fiend from hell. Well, he's a cat, said Mrs. Goggle. It's only to be expected. Fun fact, uh, my current work in progress is called Grebos. It's a term that I don't think ever really made out of the English Midlands, but it's a term for like a uh, skateboarder, rocker type, you know, a Grebo. This here I related to because of my anxiety, because I have death anxiety. Granny Weatherwax had a feeling she was going to die. This was beginning to get on her nerves. Yes, now imagine having that every day. Elves are beautiful, they've got style, beauty, grace. That's what matters. If cats looked like frogs, we'd realise what nasty, cruel little bastards they are. Style, that's what people remember. And here we're going to have uh, Sam Vimes, one of my favourite characters. He's the, the, uh, the head of the Ankh-Mole Pork City Watch. Uh, well, Night Watch, I guess. Day Watch as well. I can't even remember. He kind of changes throughout the books. Um, but this is his, th his theory about economics, which is one of my favourite little Vimesisms. The reason that the rich were so rich, Vimes reason, was because they managed to spend less money. Take Boots, for example. He earned $38 a month plus allowances. A really good pair of leather boots cost $50, but an affordable pair of boots, which was sort of okay for a season or two and then leaked like hell when the cardboard gave out, cost about $10. Those were the kind of boots Vimes always bought and wore until the soles were so thin that he could tell where he was in Ankh-Morpork on a foggy night by the feel of the cobbles. But the thing was that good boots lasted for years and years. A man who could afford $50 had a pair of boots that would still be keeping his feet dry in 10 years time, while a poor man who could only afford cheap boots would have spent $100 on boots in the same time and would still have wet feet. This was the Captain Samuel Vimes boots theory of socio-economic unfairness. And from uh, soul music we get this just two, two lines which is very true for me and my band at least. We haven't even practiced together properly said him. We'll practice as we go along, said Glod. Welcome to the world of professional musicianship. And uh, this obviously I just thought was interesting because my other half is called Susie. And this is about Susan Stohele, who is the daughter of death. She's a badass character. Uh, but she feels she's been hampered by her name. Susan, it wasn't a good name, was it? It wasn't a truly bad name. It wasn't like poor Iodine in the fourth form or Nigella, a name which means oops, we wanted a boy. But it was dull. Susan, Sue, good old Sue. It was a name that made sandwiches, kept its head in difficult circumstances, and could reliably look after other people's children. It was a name used by no queens or goddesses anywhere. And you couldn't do much, even with the spelling. You could turn it into Susie, and it sounded as though you danced on tables for a living. You could put in a Z and a couple of N's and an E, but it still looked like a name with extensions built on. It was as bad as Sarah, a name that cried out for a prosthetic H. I mean, I can't talk. I'm Dane. I'm chilling with Iodine, aren't I? And uh, someone says something's horrid, and uh, Susan is not happy with that. Horrible, thought Susan. The word is horrible. 
Horrid is a childish word selected to impress nearby males with one's fragility, if I'm any judge. Great quote. We're a university, we have to have a library, said Ridkeley. What sort of people would we be if we didn't go into the library? Students, said the senior wrangler morosely. To be fair, you can die in the library, so. And um, here's Rincewind. Well, actually there are two here I want to read out. Beer! It was only water, really, with stuff in it, wasn't it? And most of what was in it was yeast, which was practically a medicine and definitely a food. In fact, when you thought about it, beer was only a kind of runny bread. And uh, this is one of my favourite quotes from Pratchett. Is it true that your life passes before your eyes before you die? Yes. Ghastly thought, really. Rincewind shuddered. Oh, gods, I've just had another one. Suppose I am just about to die, and this is my whole life passing in front of my eyes. I think perhaps you do not understand. People's whole lives do pass in front of their eyes before they die. This process is called living. Good old death. Another great line. Books that were written all about the world tended to be written by people who knew all about books rather than all about the world. And this final quote I want to read out. There's no grey, he's only white that's got grubby. I'm surprised you don't know that. And sin, young man, is when you treat people as things, including yourself. That's what sin is. It's a lot more complicated than that. No, it ain't. When people say things are a lot more complicated than that, that means they're getting worried that they won't like the truth. People as things, that's where it starts. Oh, I'm sure there are worse crimes. But they start with thinking about people as things. So yeah, Terry Pratchett, The Wit and Wisdom of Discworld, obviously has a quote book really, there's only, I can only really read out quotes from it. Um, but yeah, as I say, it felt as though I was just reading Sparknote summaries of the Discworld books. So I gave it a 3 out of 5 because I, I still don't really know why this exists. I mean, I enjoyed it, I guess, it just, I don't know why it exists. But yeah, Terry Pratchett, The Wit and Wisdom of the Discworld. So as always, I'd love to hear what you thought. So let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.